Well, let's talk about another person that um, you definitely looked up to um, early on in your life, and that would be uh, Carl Sagan. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Carl Sagan is a world-renowned uh, astronomer, I guess you could say. Um, he also had a huge impact on your life. Um, you guys professionally are, are, have a lot of similarities, but what I want to know is you said that he showed you what kind of person that you wanted to be. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I was already embedded in the universe before I knew his name. Um, and so I, I don't credit him for opening up my eyes to science or the universe. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in high school, so now middle school days are over, high school, all this is continuing. I'm, you know, head of the astronomy club and I'm, I'm in the physics club and, you know, I'm total, totally geeked out as a student. In New York City, by the way, this was an era before being sort of nerd geek got anybody's respect. In fact, it was active disrespect. You know, it was the, the nerds that got the wedgies, you know, in the locker room from the football players. And the, they're, but I, I've thought a lot about what accounted for this transition because there's now a, a geek culture that is highly respected and the, the word is no longer used pejoratively, mm -hmm. only perhaps in fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually used with some pride. And is it the uh, Best Buy who has the Geek Squad, right? Where they, they and it's, it's, there it is on the side of their van as they go to repair your, your electronic equipment at home. So the fact that the word has been elevated, uh, I use geek synonymously with nerd here, that uh, I think that started with the movie Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, it showed that the nerds actually had had power, power of mind, power of, of solutions. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to piss off a nerd because they could, they could do things back to you. <laughs> and in the era of computing and information technology and the yeah. like, um, this, so my point is when computers became common, then you needed to know a nerd to help you fix your computer challenges. And so that elevated the stock value of all nerds in the world. And I think that happened early 1980s into the 90s and even to this day. Mm -hmm. Then the patron saint of nerds, one of the richest people in the world is, is Bill Gates. So that helps, right? By the way, you can become really rich being a nerd and then mm -hmm. it, you work for them. So, so uh, well, that's anyhow, so I was already sort of on this track mm -hmm. and my application to Cornell University was spotted by their, um, the, the interests in the universe laced into the application was noticed by the admissions committee and they sent the application to Carl Sagan's attention. He's a professor of astronomy at Cornell. And I, I, what happens next? He writes me a letter. And there it is, signed by him saying, oh, I noticed from your application, you're like the universe. Well, so do I. Uh, if you want to decide whether Cornell should be your choice, I, I invite you to come by and, you know, check out the campus and I'll show you the offices. And it was like, whoa, whoa. I went, you know, is this legit? Is this authentic? Is this, because he was already been on, he already written some books, hadn't done Cosmos yet, but he was already famous. Mm -hmm. okay, it was on all the talk shows on Johnny Carson, The Tonight Show. Right. So he was, I don't know if he was a household name, but anyone who knew anything and cared about science knew his name. <clears throat> so I was delighted by this. I took a bus up to Ithaca and it was in the winter and he met me outside the building. It was on a Saturday. So he came in on a Saturday, met me outside the building, took me up to the offices. And I remember this distinctly. This was just so badass. I'm there across the desk from him, and he just reaches back, didn't even look. It was like a no-look reach, right? <laughs> and pulled a book, and it was one of the books he had written, and then he signed it to me, and I still have that book. Wow. And um, so we're, when we're done, we're headed back. I'm going back to the bus station, and it begins to snow, as it so often does in Ithaca, New York. And he said, oh, you know, I don't know, if the bus might not come through. Here's my home number. You know, if the bus doesn't come through, call, spend the night with my family and leave tomorrow. And I, I, once I got home, I just added all this up. And I said, I'm just a nobody. Uh, who am I? Yet he, this famous person, is devoting 
even this level of attention in my way, in my direction. And I said to myself, if I am ever as famous as he is, it's one of these, if I am ever, right? I've already been through two of these. If I'm ever as famous as he is, I will treat students the way he has treated me. And so help to shape, no, not my interest in the universe. That was already established. That's why he invited me. Mm-hmm. It was just the, the humanity and the humility of it. I so greatly valued and I've never not thought of that. I mean, to this day, if there's a student at the, at, at the door waiting to come into my office and I'm on the phone, I say, Barack, I can't. I, I got somebody, I have a student at the door. I'll call you back. You got to have <laughs> your exaggerating priorities. A little yeah. there. <laughs> but but in, in the sense of priorities that I have um, retained since then. By the way, we, our names are associated together because I, I ascended to his mantle as host of Cosmos. Yeah. But we only, I only met him like maybe four or five times. Oh, really? We didn't spend, we never had a beer together or anything. It was, it was, we were not, it wasn't, again, it was not a mentor mentee. He, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of what I do that I, that I gather from him, a lot, a lot of what I do that is that where I was inspired by him, it's because of the example that he set, not because he and I sat down and said, Neil, here's what you do and here's what you do next. Sure. There was none of that. I would, it wasn't I would the guess nature guys- of my relationship with him. I would have guessed that you guys had gotten to know each other a, a bit better over the years, but no, not. No, no, it was, um, we were in each other's company maybe a total of six times. 